All right, in this lesson, we are going to continue, not surprisingly, continue to look at linear relationships. <clears throat> in this particular section, what we're going to deal with is we are going to be given a relationship or an expression and asked to make graphs from it. So that uh, is what we're doing in the last lesson. What we did is we were given tables of values and asked if they were linear uh, or to create an expression from those tables of values. So in this one, uh, same idea, just different approach. And there's two parts to this lesson. The first part's really quick. It's right here. And the second uh, part will take a little bit more concentration as it has some involvement going on. So uh, for linear relationships, to evaluate, so it's how to evaluate an equation for a given value. Uh, to do that, all you're going to do is substitute the value that you are asked to evaluate into the equation. Okay, sounds simple. I'll just see how it works here. So if you're asked, for example, to evaluate y equals 5 times x minus 3 when x equals 2, all you're going to do is evaluate what is. So you're, you're going to replace or substitute. It says when x equals 2, you're going to replace the x with 2. So basically, it's asking you what is 5 times 2, which I'll put in brackets, minus 3. That's how to evaluate the expression when x equals 2. So when x equals 2, 5 times 2 is 10, minus 3, so the answer is 7. Okay, so we just evaluated that expression for when x is equivalent to 2. Uh, in this next part, which is a little bit longer, we are going to be asked to make a table of values and a graph from a linear relationship. And we're going to deal with eventually, this is the goal, we are going to be graphing these two relationships. Okay, and that's going to take some... Uh, table of value building, and then graphing the relationship. So to graph a linear relationship when you're given a formula, so if you're given a formula like these two, y equals 3x minus 2 and h equals negative 2t plus 5, uh, the first thing is under to understand is that you have to make a table of values. Once you have a table of values, it is much easier, as we discussed, I believe, in the first lesson, to graph from that table of values. Uh, the first thing to understand is that the variable in the long expression goes in the first column or row. In the future, that's going to be called the independent variable because you get to choose its value. Uh, but for now, what you need to know, basically when we're creating this graph, is that this long expression is going to be in the first row of the table of values. So if we're making our table of values, which we'll might as well start now, the first uh, is going to be x in that case and the first value here is going to be t in this case. Okay, So that's where we start. Uh, and <clears throat> given that, what that means is that the one that's on its own, which is actually called the dependent variable because its value depends on the other variable itself, uh, is going to go in the second row or column. So that's the first thing to understand. Uh, second thing to understand is we're not given any values. So once we know that the long expression goes in the first column of the table of values, uh, we don't, to come up with values, we need values. So the easiest thing to do is if no values are given, choose easy values for the first column or row. The easiest numbers are the ones that you started counting when you were young. So numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, those types of numbers. So we might as well choose those. <clears throat> and now we have to come up with the other variables. And what we're doing here is something similar to the first part of the lesson. We're going to evaluate the expression. So we're going to evaluate y equals 3 times x minus 2. So y always equals 3 times x minus 2. So to come up with these numbers, it's always 3 times x minus 2. 3 times x minus 2. So in the first one, it's 3 times 0 minus 2, 3 times 1 minus 2, 3 times 2 minus 2, uh, 3 times 3 minus 2, 3 times 4 minus 2. So that's the idea here. And 3 times 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 3 times 1. So I'm just substituting these values, just like we did. We're evaluating into here because y is always equal to 3 times bigger than x minus 2. So 3 times 1 minus 2 is 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 2 is 4. 3 times 3 minus 2 is 7. 3 times 4 minus 2 is 10. 
uh, and we can even do the next table of values and then we'll draw the graphs from it so it's much easier and this is kind of the approach you've got an equation you make a table of values you choose e easy values and then you evaluate so for the second one h is always equal to negative 2 times t plus 5 so negative 2 times t plus 5 so negative 2 times 0 plus 5 negative 2 times 1 plus 5 negative 2 times 2 plus 5 negative 2 times 3 plus 5 and negative 2 times 4 plus 5 so those values are 5 negative 2 times 0 plus 5 is 5 negative 2 times 1 plus 5 is 3 negative 2 times 2 I'll just show you the work here uh, using the sign rules negative 4 plus 5 is 1 negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1 and negative uh, 2 times 4 plus 5 is negative 3 and the last thing you need to do now that we have the table of values is to graph the relationships. So quite an intricate practice here, and you might want to try some of these on your own uh, or not. But let's go ahead and graph these out. So we know that that's x and that's y for the next graph. And I'm going to do this, this part pretty quickly because you've done this before in previous lessons. Uh, for the next graph, what we know and you can draw this as we go and pause it and try things on your own, but essentially what we're doing here is practicing uh, drawing a <coughs> graph from a table of values. So we know from here T is the horizontal axis, H is the vertical axis. Let's go ahead and put the numbers in. So on the x-axis in both cases, we need 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we need to cover negative 2 all the way up to 10. So negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Might as well go up one more to 10. And this one we need negative 3. all the way up to 5. And if we're to graph these ordered pairs, and again, you might want to try this on your own, <clears throat> uh, the point 0, negative 2 is here, 1, 1 is here, so I'm getting these from these ordered pairs right here. So that's 1, 1, this is 2, 4, this is 3, 7, and this is the other point here, and you can see that it's a linear relationship. Okay, and the last graph, the point 0, 5 is right here. So I'm just graphing and lining them up. Uh, 1, 3 is right here. 2, 1 is here. 3, negative 1. And 4, negative 3. 